Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Lathrix. And of course, welcome back to the Lathrixian fleet, now with four Nurgle's Rots, and of course, our glorious Plague Bearer. And we even have two of the Rot Rays currently floating around on the top, looking silly as ever. In today's episode, we are going to hopefully push towards yet another one of the Shadow Portals. I'm going to get in the bottom left quadrant. So we are going southwest, hopefully to find new enemy types and to simply destroy them. We of course are going to send a couple of satellites forwards so that we can see where we are going. Currently we are very very high on resource. Having this extra resource zone has actually been a lot better than I originally expected so we are getting an absolute fortune as soon as we pull all of the vehicles out of existence and start speeding up time so hopefully soon we can make a second plague bearer. I have now set up all of the advanced cannons so all of these are working. I have made them slightly higher gauge so the flak should be doing a little bit more damage so hopefully that will provide a decent force against the enemy. So let's just pull all of our forces out and let's move towards the next shadow portal hopefully getting a couple of resource zones along the way. We now have a load of resource harvesters on the Plague Bearer, so let's see how long it takes to fully remove this resource zone from existence. And whilst that's going on, I would like to say I am now saving up resource to add some new weaponry to the Plague Bearer and simply upgrade what we already have. Although I won't be going with shields purely because I think that would make it a little bit too powerful considering most of the designs here are for fun. I still want to have the Plague Bearer explode from time to time, even though that costs a fortune. I'm really trying to make quote unquote balanced vehicles here so we can still lose forces as the battles go, because otherwise, What's the point in this whole campaign? The first battle of the day against a bone zone, a headless swimmer, a headless swimmer, the Vlad and the Nuko Lantern. Now I've put the Plague Bearer over here, so hopefully what's going to happen is that the Nuko Lantern goes towards it and then simply detonates. Also for some reason I can't spawn in the Plague Bearer, it seems it's just too big. So what I'm going to do is put that little bit down. Wow, really? That's all I can bring in? Two Nurgle's Rots and the Plague Bearer? Well, apparently we have too much force here, so even with the maximum settings, that's all I can spawn in to start off with. That is a shame, and that is one of the problems with building big in this campaign, but at least we do have the Nurgle's Rots. Let's move this one in a little bit further back, since that's the one that's going to spawn in, and let's... And so begins the first battle of the day. What are we fighting? We are fighting against the Bone Zone, the Headless Swimmer, the Headless Swimmer, the Vlad, and a single Nuko Lantern. Now I'm fairly certain the Nuko Lantern seem, at least, to be going towards our largest vehicles. So what I'm going to do is put the Plague Bearer all the way over here, then hopefully it may end up ramming into the Bone Zone. This definitely doesn't happen as often as I would like, but occasionally it does, so let's see if we get lucky there. Now the Nurgle's Rots, I'm going to put them like this, and hopefully that means they won't end up shooting each other, at least that's what I'm really, really hoping on. This one can go... let's put this one here, then this one here. Very, very misty. So there's the Plague Bearer, and there's the two Nurgle's Rots, which are currently in the battle. We have the two Headless Swimmers, we have the Vlad shooting its torpedoes, which are honestly quite terrifying, and then we have the Nuko Lantern kind of sitting there weirdly. Oh, there's two Nuko Lanterns! Well, apparently I didn't see one of those. Hopefully the one detonates on the Swimmer. It got kicked, but it didn't detonate. Well, that may be a problem. Incoming broadside, and there goes the first headless swimmer to the very first broadside, although it did cause a lot of lag. The Nuko Lantern detonating on our Plague Bearer. Oh, that's a shame. It's not targeting the right target, but thankfully it did hit. I think that may have been the Flak. The Flak, the flak did deal with the second Nuko Lantern. They are on separate mainframes. The Flak are trying to go for the faster targets, so that only makes sense. Over here, the Vlad has been destroyed, but where are its torpedoes? That is a very good question. 
Here they are. I think we should watch these, because these could do a lot of damage. Oh, yes it can! Straight into the ammunition cache! And the Nurgle's rock goes flying. Does it even have its AI still? Yes it does, because it is still trying to move. Just very badly damaged. The Bone Zone has now spawned in and is about to be hit by a broadside. And it's going a little bit airborne there. Not doing as much as I would like, honestly. The Flak is hitting it and actually doing a fair bit. A lot of those shells detonated early. Does the Bone Zone have some kind of anti-ammunition weapon? It very well might. Those shells, by the way, are absolutely terrifying from the Bone Zone. They are very powerful, but quite slow shooting. And there it goes. Well done, guys. You were victorious. Although, apparently, there was... There is one enemy left. Is it just the Bone Zone? I think it is. Is one of our rot rise in the water? Either that was damaged, or something very weird's going on there. But there we are, a lot of resource gained, hopefully enough to repair the Plague Bearer, which did take a fair bit of damage near the end, and let's continue moving. After that last clip, I think I know what I would like to do with the Plague Bearer. I think we should add some torpedoes. I don't want to add more missiles, because we already have missiles on the Nurgle's Rot, we already have missiles on the Rot Rays, but torpedoes are at least somewhat more interesting. And, with the flat sections here at the back, we could very easily have it so, when we're broadsiding, one side of the ship will be firing torpedoes constantly, or at least have a quick burst at the start. We could also put them on a turret, maybe? I'm not really too sure. I think just having them here, and have them being thrown out, would be the easiest option. And we should have some space here as well, if I'm correct. We have these several layers of metal casing, that's one of the two AIs, then we have this section here with the space armor, and we can easily take out this and add the torpedo weapon there. Now the question is, do we have a few very large torpedoes, or do we have a load of very small ones? If we go with the smaller option, we can have a more consistent fire rate, which would look very, very cool, but it would also mean that they won't really have all that much impact per hit. But having a swarm of them in the water would also be very cool, and would end up hurting ourselves more, but honestly, isn't that the whole fun of having a fleet so that they can end up killing each other? I think that's a good enough reason. So, we'll have them like that. I won't be using... where are you? I won't be using the ejectors this time, and hopefully that will be okay? We'll have to see. So, let's see. Minimum size. Okay, after we attach them, we'll have a good look-see. I think this is the setup we're going to go with. So the idea of these is they're going to be incredibly weak, but explosive warheads do have a rather large damage bonus if they detonate underwater. Which also means what we could do is sacrifice one of the fins to add ballast tanks. This way the torpedoes are almost definitely going to be underwater and they won't constantly do that weird dolphin movement in which they jump out of the water then go back under and then end up losing a lot of speed. I think I will do that. We'll see how it goes. This does mean they're going to be incredibly non-agile. They won't be too long range, but thankfully torpedoes are incredibly fuel efficient. So even though we are only using one fuel tank, that should be enough. So that's what I'm going to go with. Very, very cheap. Very, very basic. And honestly, if they hit in a pretty short amount of time between each hit, they will probably do quite a bit of damage despite this. So... This is the anti-anything-that's-in-the-water weapon. So, straight into a battle, although we have also found where the next ghost portal is here in the corner. Once we own this, we'll then have three infinite resource zones, and then we can just start spamming units over and over again. So against us, we have the ghost ship, we have the Baba Yaga, we have the crow, we have the bone drake, we have the bone drake, and we have the bone drake. And by the looks of things, I can spawn in one Plague Bearer, of course, the Nurgle's Rot, the Rotray, the Nurgle's Rot. 
How about if I put the other Rai a little bit further up? Oh, I can now spawn that in as well. Apparently that's the order I should always put them in. So let's just put these in a more traditional manner, have this on the side. Although, do I really want it that close when the enemy are using bone drags? They are the melee enemy, so perhaps that wouldn't be the best idea. I'm not too sure there, honestly. We'll see. We'll see. Let's move all these here. We can have the Nurgle's Rots underneath the flyer. So put you there, and then the other Nurgle's Rot is this one. And you can go here. Okay. That should be good. You know, I have very little faith in these torpedoes until I've seen them work, so... Please work. Okay, the torpedoes are firing on both sides. I knew I had done that wrong. Something just told me I had done that completely wrong. Okay, the flak is going for the crow. It's done some damage on the back. The missiles from the rays are also helping out a lot. Yay for the tiny little bit of flak damage. The enemy ghost ship was hit by a fair chunk of the broadside, although quite a bit is also missing. I love the fact that our broadside is just a little bit inaccurate because it means it fires like this rather than being overly concentrated. There's actually nothing really in the water to test the torpedoes against. Both sides of the broadside just fired, which was fairly awesome, to be perfectly honest. Ooh, will the torpedoes go for the downed enemy? Let's find out. Ooh, these are heading towards me. Which one of the enemies has torpedoes? That's coming from really low down as well. So where are mine? So there's mine heading towards the enemy Bone Drake, and there's the enemies coming from... I don't even know. Where are you coming from? That's slightly worrying. We just lost one of our ammo storages on the Plague Bearer. The broadside finishing off the enemy Bone Drake at least. There it goes. The crow is now in the water. Let's see where the enemy torpedoes are. That's our torpedoes now being very confused since the enemy got destroyed before they reached it. They definitely were going for it. So the torpedoes are working. They're just a little bit off. One of the Nurgle's rots is currently in the air. And again, where are those torpedoes? Perhaps they already hit. No, they're going for a different target. They are going for the crow. Now I'm very confused. These are definitely not ours. They're definitely larger, but they're the only torpedoes I've actually installed, so I have no idea where they're going. The flak there hitting the enemy quite effectively. One of the shells from the enemy ghost ship sadly hitting the plague bearer. The two rot rays are doing absolutely fine, currently in the air still. Oh, they weren't torpedoes at all. They were missiles from this lovely witch. Okay, that explains that. Plague Bearer being hit in the ammunition again by the enemy ghost ship, which is now flying up in the air because of its hover blades being damaged. One of the bone drakes has spawned in. Missiles incoming from the two rot rays. Sadly, a bit too short range. The flak still isn't doing all that much, but it wasn't really intended to be too powerful. Oh, you actually did hit something. I thought you were completely missing then. One of the Nurgle's rots is being pulled down towards the depths by that torpedo. Sorry, by that harpoon. There it is. So the Bone Drake is currently pulling this poor Nurgle's rot straight into the water. Enemy ghost ship being hit by our flak and actually doing a fairly good job. The flak really isn't that powerful, but it's getting the job done. Oh, that's going to hurt if that hits. And it certainly did. We are not doing too well in this fight. Our anti-air definitely has a lot to be desired. On the upside, it looks very cool having all these little explosions constantly following the enemy ghost ship. 
The Plague Bearer is going to be hit, but thankfully is quite heavily armoured from the top, so that won't do too much as it hits the bottom. The Rai there, unleashing its full volley of missiles and doing a fairly good job doing some internal damage. Can you please go down? You're hard countering my ships. They don't do this very well. Finally going down. Very, very slowly. Hats off to the ghost ship for being remarkably sturdy. Well, to be fair, it is made out of complete metal and it does have shields, so it's significantly hardier than the Nurgle's rots, which are made out of mostly wood and are there just to be cheap. At least we're now firing the cram cannons. And one of them hitting it just as it gets destroyed. That was a pretty embarrassing fight, honestly. All round, nothing really went well there. So, what did we learn? What did we learn is a very good lesson. Well, whoa, the Plague Bearer was way more hurt than I thought it was. Well done for surviving, just well done for that. So we learned that, that the flak weapons are terrible. Well, they're not terrible, but they're better suited against wooden enemies, not metal enemies. Because they did well against the crow. The crow was actually very hurt by the flak, as was the flying witch. But against the ghost ship, they just didn't do anything. I think the explosion radius is a bit too small. So I think what we're going to need to do is scale them back again so it only has one barrel and make the shots very slightly larger. After that... I think we should also just make them heavier in terms of their payload, so less speed, more payload, and then increase the barrel length so they're a little bit more accurate. This is what happens when you don't test in the sandbox mode and you just do live testing. Sometimes things just don't work out as you want them. Other than that, everything went okay. The torpedoes didn't really get to hit an enemy, so we didn't test them, but hopefully in the future we will. Also, this is not the time for bright green glowing water. Perhaps it's the blood of the plague bearer flowing into the ocean. Okay, I think I'm done. I'm still trying not to go over the top, which is a very difficult thing for me, to be perfectly honest. But I'm still trying to make it so when we have a fight, it's at least interesting. So here's the new version of the turret. The new version will fire faster. It's got a 90 rounds per minute fire rate. The old version was somewhere around about 50. The gauge has increased by 20 millimeters, and the shells themselves have been increased, so they have more flak per shell so hopefully they will be doing a bit more damage. Let's see. Can I possibly aim somewhere over here? Okay, that's better. So every shot can pretty much destroy two beams of wood, which, although that's not too powerful, it will be good enough to start taking off chunks of flying enemies so that they will be destabilized and then go into the water. Plus, please bear in mind, we have lots of these guns. So now that's all been upgraded. Let's retrofit all of the guns to be this new version, and then we'll get straight into another fight. We are very close to the enemy. Also, oil refinery is underwater and has turned off. Because, well, we've kind of sunk the ship a little bit. It's still on for the most part, but occasionally the water level gets just high enough to turn it off. Because efficiency is a thing we don't care about. Also, once again, the blood of the plague bearer. As soon as we damage the ship, the water turns green and creepy. I no longer think this is simply a coincidence. So I thought I would add some lights to the guns to make them look a little bit more eerie. Now I really should start adding lights and smoke generators and everything else to the Plague Bearer, but I really want to finish this campaign before it goes away forever. So what we're doing is we'll be finishing the campaign probably in the next episode at this rate, if all goes according to plan, and then we'll have an episode just messing around with the designs, finishing off the Nurgle's Rot, and finishing off the Plague 
bearer, because there's still a lot of things I would very much like to improve. Hopefully, as I go towards the enemy, the strength 88 will be pulled away before we actually get into the fight. One thing I have noticed, though, is why are these bases not spawning in enemies? They really should be doing that. We still have the setting on 200%, or at least it should be on 200%, unless the update defaulted it. Um, let's have a quick look-see. It's in campaign options, I think. Nope, it's still the same stats as it was before. Difficulty modifier is on times one, enemy growth factor is, in, is on times two, and the resource given by destroying the enemy is on maximum. We have a slight gain, uh, sorry, a slight decrease in experience gained because we chose centralized material over localized to make things a little bit faster. So they should still be spawning in quickly. Maybe the update has messed things up, but for some reason we're just not under attack anymore, which is. It's kind of sad, honestly. Okay, satellite, move back. Let's get into this fight and let's see what's actually against us. Let's back off a little bit. We don't want to accidentally spawn in that. So let's see if we can get it towards the next tile. Good, it hasn't spawned in. So against us, we have the ghost pirate ship. We have the bone drag, the ghost pirate ship, the ghost pirate ship, and the ghost pirate ship. Oh, I'm really hoping the flak works now. We have the crow, we have the lovely witch again, and then we have the witch's hat. This is actually a pretty scary fight. I'm hoping it's going to go okay. Wait, I can only spawn in the plague bearer? You're kidding me. Maybe having the rot rays out first. Oh, I don't know what to do here. Can we have at least one rot ray? Okay, so we can spawn in two of the rays, but the Nurgle's rots are too big apparently, so it's going to be the plague bearer and the two rays, and that's it. Everything is in position, so let's get straight into the fight. Really, really hoping the flak is going to work here. Everything on, good. Okay, the enemy are... Whoa, we spawned too close. We should not have spawned this close. Why did we spawn this close? Please focus on the rays and not on the plague bearer. The plague bearer is such an easy thing to hit. Okay, well, the flak's definitely firing, so... Let's see how it does. I didn't realize that the crow had so many shields. Okay, yeah, there we go. The flak just actually destroyed the crow. The flak's doing fine. The flak has been massively improved. In fact, it's even doing some damage against the ghost ships. A good amount of damage, actually. I'm oddly happy with how the flak's doing. Well done. Broadside sadly missing because it was guessing it was a little bit more airborne. And we have lost our ammunition storage again! That actually has heavy armor defending it, so these things, crams ca cram cannons rather, are terrifying. The rot rise there, bullying that ghost ship. Oh no, and we're about to be hit in the back again. The torpedoes really have no chance to hit anything in this campaign. Also, those two healing each other is very annoying. Thank you, Flak, for doing something at least. Now focusing on the one in the front. Uh-oh. That's going to hurt. That's really going to hurt. Maybe shields wouldn't be a bad idea as we lose a chunk from the back again. This is the problem with having wood armor. Explosions just go straight through it. There's no defense. And I really don't want to go with ghostly shields, but I think we're going to have to. Otherwise, it's just going to be so horrible to see us getting hit. But at the same time, that's what... I'm trying to do, making it interesting and explosive. It's so difficult to figure out how I should do things. How far should I go? Because we definitely have the engine power. Adding shields would be really easy. The witch's hat over there being hit by the flak. Uh-oh, bone drag. And the broadside hitting the witch's hat. Will it actually make contact? Yes, it will. Uh-oh. Uh oh, oh, please! Something hit the bone drag! Come on, flyer, that's me. Sorry, come on, flak, you can do it. Yes, it's going down, but not fast enough! Don't freeze now, I need to see what's going on! Seriously, that flak is so awesome, thank you. <laughs> thank you! 
One of the Rais has been defeated and is slowly floating to the floor. The flak is slowly picking off the enemies. It's doing what it, what it should be doing, though. Not critical damage, at least not for the most part. <coughs> Pardon me, but it is destabilizing the enemies. Ignore the belch, then. Oh, no. Cram shots on the back of the Plague Bearer. A lot of damage done. Incoming a load of flak, though, against the enemy witch. I need to redo the timers, though, in those fuses. They seem a little bit off. Is that actually made out of complete metal? Because the flak is not doing that well against it. Yeah, it is. It is actually double thick metal on the outside. That is fairly cool. More crams hitting us on the back, thankfully, because our block count is taking a long time to hit the AI. Although, saying that, I think that may have done it. The plague, yep, yeah, one of the plague bearers' AI is currently offline, so now only the flak is online. The crams have been turned off. Okay, that's going down. That's no longer a worry. The broadsides from the Nurgle's Rots are very badly placed right now, so I'm a little bit nervous. If they go anywhere near hurting the Plague Bearer, I will turn them off. Also, that one just hurt itself. So firing directly backwards like that. Ooh, that's so close. Firing directly backwards like that, they can actually hit their own barrels. That doesn't happen on the Plague Bearer, but apparently it can happen on the Rot. So much flak when they're all firing together. Little chunks here and there being removed. The missiles from the remaining ray doing its work. Along with, of course, the missiles from the uh, rots. The Nurgles rots. I keep forgetting these are called rot rays. The Nurgles. I am impressed by how hard it is to actually kill the Plague Bearer, though. One of the AI still being online after all of that is quite impressive, although by the looks of things, the advanced cannons are now in their repair stage, sorry, their reload stage, and we have no ammunition. Or we've only just now started to repair the ammunition storage, so without the support, the Plague Bearer would now actually lose this fight. But thankfully, of course, we do have support in the form of all these Nurgle's Rots. Hitting flying targets with Cram. Very difficult. I say as it hits it. I do love these. The ghost ships look so awesome. I love how they've done the face using... It looks like an anglerfish, and I really do appreciate that. A couple of the advanced cannons are now back online with the Plague Bearer, so maybe it would have had a chance, but it doesn't look likely. It's going to cost so much to repair that. I also love the fact that as the ghost ship takes damage, it becomes airborne. The Nurgle's Rot Cram Cannons are so much weaker than the Plague Bearers. Oh, please don't get in the way of the enemy, Ray, thank you very much. Just, just stick out of the enemy. Don't actually ram it, that'd be fantastic. Or be hit by all of our Cram Shots. Or by your own missile. Naturally. It'd be, naturally it would be self-harm that kills the Ray. The witch's hat is still- the witch's hat and a second ghost ship! Oh, the right- the plague bearer, rather, is in such a bad place right now. Can't even move. Also, you're both in fleet move. Why the hell was that? The plague bearer has took such a beating. Look at that. Also, that's got stuck as that's been repaired. Well done. We just lost the ammo storage again, thanks to the enemy ghost ship, which I am... I'm, I'm, I'm having a lot of respect for. And of course I die. Oh, wow, the plague bear is even more hurt than I thought it was. Currently on 69% health. The blood of the plague bearer flows into the ocean. Moments later, one of the Nurgle's rots just went up. 
the enemy ghost ship dodging the attacks a little bit too well as our broadside slowly, slowly do a little bit of damage. The flak from the Nurgle's Rots is actually incredibly weak. It seems like I need to up upgrade that turret as well. Stop going for the Plague Bearer! I mean, it's a cool concept having this titan-sized ship in the middle here just taking the brunt of the damage, but please stop. It's my baby and you're hurting it. It's very mean. Are any of the rays online? There's one here at 94%. Oh. Oh no, it's too damaged. The Plague Bearer is going down. No, 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 come on. Oh, yeah, that's gone. The Plague Bearer is definitely dead. Having no dedicated anti-air or anti-fast and then having so many of these attack us was just too much. Well done, Rot Ray. Just, just helping things along there, aren't you? Yep. Is the dying Plague Bearer trying to heal the Ray? really buggily. For those who wanted to see me lose a fight, this very well may be it. These things are really good. And they... I, it's just cram cannons. They don't deal with fast-moving targets. I mean, just look at, at the fireworks in the previous season of From the Depths versus the Onyx Watch for a good example of that. Too damaged! It's too damaged! The enemy is finally dying! The Nurgle's Rot and the Plague Bearer definitely need to be upgraded. But they don't know. I do like this. I do like losing a fight. Or at least coming close to losing a fight. It's nice. Even if I am purposefully building weak, it's such a weird feeling. Okay, all that's left is the enemy witch's hat. Uh, which one of the Nurgle's Rot is currently not working? You aren't. Okay, so I'll jump on board that and try to heal it. Hello. Um, Nurgle's Rot, you appear to be missing, like, half of you. I mean, it's impressive that you're moving, but you are missing... The front isn't there, is what I'm trying to say here. You don't have a head. The Nurgle's Rots are actually cockroaches. Really, really cheap wooden cockroaches. I am surprised how well they survive, considering they don't even have a metal, a metal inside. As you can see, they're just hollowed out wood. Very, very cheap and nothing else. Also, the witch's hat heals at a ridiculous rate. Like, all of these here are repair bots. It's just been healing this entire fight. On the upside, we have managed to scavenge enough resource to instantly rebuild the Plague Bearer. The fact I lost it is actually really sad, to be perfectly honest. Can you please be too damaged already? Oh, thank you, finally! Wait. Did you just stop being too damaged? No, you finally self-destructed. Wow. Just... Everything repair, let's finish off this enemy. This portal needs to go away now. So this is the pumpkin portal, apparently. Glorious healing from our satellite. Plague Bearer versus the Shadow Portal, all on their own. Let's see who will be victorious. It really should be a pretty good victory for the Plague Bearer, and this time we actually get to test out our glorious little tiny torpedoes. Now, here's something I found out a moment ago, which many of you will face palm for, and the worst thing is, this isn't even the first time I've made this mistake. These torpedoes. 
I accidentally, I have no idea when I did this, but I did this at some stage, I accidentally swapped out the fuel tank for fins. Which means they had no fuel until this battle. Now that wouldn't have mattered anyway, it's not like they could have gone for any of the enemies at any point really, but they didn't even have a chance. Maybe they could have hit the downed bone drake, but they literally had no fuel, so they were simply like smart bombs and just slowly drifted down. Now I've added fuel, they should work fine, and now I've done that, I can fix this side to add some constraints so it can only fire in one direction. So everything should be fine from now, I just can't believe I've made that mistake. Missile volley hitting us. Not for very much, and incoming our volley back, utterly obliterating the center section. Most of the shells actually going through. And there's the second volley, just removing the weapon completely. Has that completely severed the two sections? It should have, although most likely it hasn't because of just how things have been set up. Look at the torpedoes, now they've got proper speed to them. Actually hitting their target. Where were you aiming that time? Oh, it's actually moving. I didn't even realize that. Last volley, just about catching it. There we go. The Plague Bearer getting a little bit of revenge there. So yeah, torpedoes didn't even have a chance, were completely broken. Now one thing which is good at least is that because I haven't added a one turn segment, we could potentially have them firing like this, the torpedoes, and we probably won't harm ourselves too much because they won't be turning around all of the time. But it's just simply a waste of ammo, so I will fix that before the next episode, but I'm afraid I am all out of time. So if you have enjoyed, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. In the next episode, we'll make a few changes to the Plague Bearer and the Nurgle's Rot to make them just a little bit more effective so that we can kill the enemies a little bit quicker, and I will happily fix the torpedo system. I still can't believe I swapped out the fuel for fins. On the upside, they were very, very agile for the few moments they were going forwards. So thank you for watching, and goodbye. One more resource zone is ours.